A welcome, brothers and sisters, uh, to your wellspring of knowledge. Hello, friends. Uh, I am by the names of Joseph Ndaishimie. Uh, welcome back to your, um, to our channel, Medicine and Health Initiative Center. In the previous presentation, we have discussed much about spinal anesthesia. We have seen uh, what is spinal anesthesia, the indication, contraindication. We have seen uh, uh, the layers that that are PST to reach subalachnoid space. We have seen many things, landmarks. Now we are going to go on with the complication of anesthesia. Yeah. Okay, now, friends, uh, as a reminder, we have seen that spinal anesthesia is related to a technique of introducing local anesthetic in the subalachnoid space to interrupt both sensory and the motor neurotransmission. That's one. Second, we have seen that a spinal anesthesia has gained uh, popularity for many surgical procedures. We have seen, uh, for short, the adverse effects uh, or complications, which we are going to cover in this presentation. Uh, Now, friends, we are going. Yeah, this is the category for this complication according to uh, how they occur. First one, you have sympathetic broken leg complication where you have hypotension and bradycardia. We have high orthoto blockage. We have cardiac arrest or on the urinary retention. On drug effect related complication, we have. Local systemic, uh, local anesthetic systemic toxicity, and the uh, material related, uh, we have a need of pressment, related complication where we can you have backage, dura puncture, and subdura injection. Uh, last on this talk, P uh, this subtopic, we have postdura puncture headache, PDPH. Uh, on the central, uh, on the nervous system, we can have conus medullaris injury, spinal epidural hematoma, or meningitis or epidural abscess. Friends, now we are going to try to look some of the key points you have to keep in mind uh, about the complications or a hypertension and bradycardia that arise from uh spinal anesthesia this is the lecture of the week friends what is a uh, hypertension what's a hypertension hypertension it is the decrease in the systemic vascular resistance or blood pressure of the patient by 20 percent from the baseline it is the most it's most most commonly occurring complication uh, flowing spinal anesthesia for all patients uh, in under surgery, but it's very critical, especially in obstetric anesthesia. Uh, as you know, uh, hypertension in this population and the any obstetrics is compounded by autocovo comp compression as the, the uterine blood flow is dependent on the maternal blood pressure. So you have to be cautious for uh, obstetric patients because they usually have severe hypertension. Any delay, a mistake can be imminent to death. Now, how does hypertension come? It is caused by sympathetic fiber blockage in the sacral lesion or spinal cord. And its immediately leads to low blood pressure because of decreased systemic vascular resistance as the result of this lack of sympathetic thorn. Uh, the blood pressure 
as you have seen, it differs because of this sympathetic blockage. If we say uh, sympathetic block, we, do, we don't ignore parasympathetic, but we have much sympathetic block compared to parasympathetic because sympathetic, it, we have seen, it's rumba sacro. It's rumba sacro. Uh, that's the reason behind having much sympathetic block. It cuts off caliber of blood vessels, uh, the function of a heart, uh, heart because, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, all, all the fibers are blocked, including those that uh, increase the activity of heart, but increase the gut contraction, you know, because we have an opposed parasympathetic on G80. These are the signs and symptoms uh, for those patients experiencing hypertension following spinal anesthesia. First one, there is what we call it headedness or dizziness. Uh, dizziness. Uh, we have a tachycardia. Yes, the heart heartbeat increase. The heart rate of the patient increase so to compensate for the the reduced uh, uh, cardiac output. We have profound fatigue, temporary blurring or loss of vision. We last we have sweating. Bloody cardia. Bloody cardia leads to decrease in heart rate and the contractivity as the result of an opposed parasympathetic tone. It is also defined as the lasting heart rate that is below 60 beats per minute. Uh, here there is a mistake of typing. Uh, but uh, what uh, I was to say is that uh, it's the lasting heart rate to mean that uh, see the heart rate that a patient has when he is in a lasting situation. For example, we have, well, we have a sinus lithium, which is between 60 and 100. But friends, you have to remember that uh, it's a little bit different for some population. For, for example, athletic, athletic people, they used to have low uh, heart rate. Don't consider them to be hypotensive. Once you have, you find that they have between 50 and 60 beats per minute. The same story for those patients under sleep in a sleeping condition. They have uh, something like bradycardia, but it's not bradycardia, but uh, uh, because uh, when you are asleep, the heart rate decreases. Why? We need uh, less blood volume, oxygen consumption, because many activities are somehow stopped once you are under strip. It's due to block the cardio accelerator sympathetic fibers from T1 to T4, 5. Well, yeah, you see where we have vagotone. The, the signs and symptoms we have lightheadedness, uh, dizziness, is fatigability, fainting, shortness of breath, chest pain, and confusion. The management is just simple. Hypotension, the most compo the common complication due to sympathetic blockage. Uh, the treatment, prophylactic preload with 1 to 1.5 liter of a crystalloid. Curative, please first head low position, 15 degree. Give fluids, ephedrine or phenylephrine, and oxygen inhalation. Bloody cardia. Please give IV at the following presentation. Thank you, friends, for taking Thank your time to be with me.
throughout this presentation. We thank you. Be with us for the next presentation.